The Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic government in exile, Mazi Simon Eba Ahomadike II of Ndibo, roast Kalanta Benjamin, uh, the Deputy House of Rep representative, who said that part of his priority as the Deputy Speaker of House of Rep is to make sure that the a leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazen Nandekano, will, be, will soon be out of the DSS detention. But the Prime Minister, Simon Eba, started roasting the man because looking at the second paragraph of his statement, it was as if he was just using the issue of Mazen Nandekano to get clout on the air and also to get the attention of the Southeast people, Ndeibo, as he was speaking. At this first paragraph of his statement, he said that part of his priority is to make sure that Kano is out of the DSS, DSS detention. And while he continued, he started uh, talking about the need, how important it is that Ndibo shows the uh, President Tinubu's administration and allow Tinubu to see that Ndibo accepts him. And everybody is wondering, was there a time Ndibo? did not accept President Bola uh, Ahmed Tinubu. Why don't politicians of Southeast origin go straight to the point when they want to make a statement rather than beating around the bush and also um, trying to find a way to mention Mazin and the Kano's name? Meanwhile, let's go to what uh, Benjamin Carlos said before I'll bring you that of the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic government in exile. The Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Benjamin Carlo, has emphasized that achieving peace and security in the Southeast region is a prerequisite pre before seeking the release of Mazin Nandikano, the leader of the, of the indigenous people of Biafra. During an interaction with journalists at his home in Bende, Right Honorable Benjamin Carlo clarified that the Southeast objective of securing Kano's release should be pursued through peaceful negotiation rather than attempting to pressure the federal government. He expressed the view that many efforts by Southeast leaders to secure Kano's release have been more about public image than genuine negotiation. He said to get Kano release is not about how much you talk about it on the pages of the newspapers or screens of television stations. It needs strategic thinking and strategic steps to get it done. Many do that by arm twisting the federal government. He said many thoughts that by arm twisting the federal government through sit at home every Monday through violence and destruction, Kano will be immediately released. You can never untwist the federal government, but you can dialogue. He also described the threat to burn down the region. If the federal government refused to listen to its request as equal to shooting oneself in the foot. He averred the houses you are shooting at are, this, are in the southeast. The people you are killing are in are the easterners. Carl also said that it was tantamount to daring the federal government to say it's fire for fire and violence for violence. He enthused so critical thinking, the best approach is to reduce the violence in the region and create a platform for negotiation. Uh, this one is coming from um, House of Rep Deputy Speaker, uh, Maze Honorable Benjamin Carlo, uh, has stated that the best way to achieve the lead, uh, the release of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazen and the Kano, is through the means of peace and dialogue. And I think that looking at what he says, uh, he is right. But the question is, um, the Honest and uh, led by Nani uh, Emmanuel Iwanyangu, uh, who said that the uh, freedom fighters should give them uh, 40 days to be able to lay ass with the government and report back to them. And um, the thing is, what has been the report, what has been the, the outcome of the dialogue between Johannes and Dibo and the 
president of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, after the 40 days. I think um, it should be an issue of garbage in, garbage out, whereby the the, the Ohanese uh, had uh, told the people to come down, cease fire for 30 days, which have uh, 40 days, uh, which happened. And um, I think uh, Ohanese should also tell these people, um, this is the hard outcome of the meeting we had the president with, with, with the president, or if we have met the president before, or if we have not met with the president, I think this way, uh, people should know a way forward. And also, I think um, every government should run with transparency without having a skeleton underneath the cupboard in order to be able to uh, let the populace know that you have them at heart and you are not just doing anything to manipulate them. Of course, you know how the politicians uh, manipulate their populace uh, through their best needs and whatever they need. And this has been the issue in Africa where uh, even the politicians manipulate the populace uh, with the issue of hunger uh, because they know that as far as Africa is concerned, uh, coming about food is something that is very hard because of the poor infrastructure and the poor, uh, uh, inf poor infrastructural development, poor environment and the rest of the, the thing. And the government not being able to provide social amenities that the, their citizens need. And this has caused a lot of suffering whereby you see uh, one politician you know, diverting public funds to private account, making sure that the pharmacies are suffering, and this has been the the issue all along. Chide Amadi, weakest loyalty, resigned as Fubara's chief of staff. Chide Amadi, the chief of staff to Governor Similari Fubara, has resigned. The Commissioner for Information and Communication, Joseph Johnson, officially confirmed Amadi's resignation on Wednesday. Fubara, in due course, will announce a successor for Amadi, a staunch supporter of S. Governor Yeson Mwike. Amadi, hailing from Obio, Obio, a poor local government area of River State, shares kingship with Mwike. His resignation marks the departure of the 10th loyalists of Mwike from Fubara's administration amid the ongoing political discord between Fubara and his estranged political mentor, Mwike. I mean, its decision coincides with growing demand for Fubara to appoint Edison Ehie, a former factional speaker of the State House of Assembly, as chief of staff. On January 3, the Ijo Youth Council worldwide urged Fubara to recognize Ehie's loyalty during a plot by 27 lawmakers loyal to S. Governor Yeson Wicker to impeach Fubara. The former chief of staff, Honorable Chief Chedi Amadi, has resigned. The governor will announce another chief of staff at the appropriate time. It is the prerogative of the governor to appoint when he wants it. He will tell us and we will announce it and you will also get the release to the effect, he said. Uh, when I don't see I see they happen, this one um, is happening between um, gov uh, former, former governor of River State and the present governor of River State now, Fubara. Of course, you know that the former governor of River State is Yeson Wike, who is now the minister of the Federal Capital Territory. And according to what is happening in River State, um, is that um, the former governor still want to have his steering, his hand on the steering, uh, that or the ruder uh, that directs the the, the 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 ship of that of River State. Um, the, the fight and the battle, as it is said, is the battle of Godfatherism and Sonnerism. Um, as it is, uh, people believe that uh, Fubara was once weakest loyalist and he was like weakest boy. And Wicke thought that uh, by fixing him into what is going on, of course, you know what I mean, uh, will help him to have his hands on River State and that um, Fubara is going to be his loyalist. But as it is, uh, it looks as if uh, that Fubara has decided to uh, go his own way and leave Wike by the side. And that has been causing Katakata in River State. And many people who are loyal uh, to the former governor of River State has resigned from uh, Fubara's side. And they have decided to go back uh, to their grandmaster, where be the uh, where they control the onion onions. Of course, you know, as it be, uh, 
if you talk about Nigeria political structure, strategy, and the happenings without bringing in Wike, uh, I think you have not started at all. If you also talk about PDP party, uh, without even mentioning people like Wike, uh, when it comes to Nigeria political atmosphere or sphere, uh, without mentioning that man, I think you have not even started. Meanwhile, I'll be winding down the curtain here. And if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, you will be the first one we'll collect them. Thank you for listening. God bless you.